Hello and welcome. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions podcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, on this rather bright and glorious uh, autumn day, the 7th of October 2022. I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are in the world. And um, yes, let's get on with the content. Uh, first of all, I, I might <laughs> make myself a little darker here because it's a bit bright. Um, let's see if I can see what I can do. Um, that's a bit better. How about that? There we go. That'll do. That'll do for now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these these uh, yoga solutions uh, broadcasts uh, uh, so that I can bring coherent solutions to you. Um, I, I've been using my yoga practice to find um, solutions to uh, physical restrictions uh, and through that is expanded into emotional and kind of personal restrictions that have started to fall away through the practice. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of my baseline intent behind my yoga. It's, uh, it's a tool for self-development. And um, in the process, I sort of uncover these sort of truism, truisms, um, the, the reality of what we're um, of how we go about actually achieving the thing that we're looking for. And um, one of my baseline principles, if you like, over the last uh, 20 years at least, maybe 15, I don't know, um, has been that if you practice your yoga as, a, as if you are do it, trying to do something to your body, the, the, the thing that you will arrive at as a result of those, that way of dealing with yourself will be a controlled body as opposed to you and your body integrating. Um, it, it, it sort of adds to the complication. The complication is separation. The complication is dissociation between you as a person and your body and when I realized, or when it became blatantly obvious that these separations with ourselves arise through a sense of separation from everything around us, a, a sense of needing to protect ourselves or defend ourselves against the world. So we develop these physical relationships where instead of being open to space, we retract from it. Instead of um, surrendering our weight to where we touch the ground, we hold our weight up, away from the ground. Um, and the, these are a sort of an outcome of how we feel, how we feel about the world. So for, for a couple of decades at least now, I've been inviting people to engage, engage with the world in ways that are more harmonious for the body. As in, instead of lifting your arm in space, you find a relationship to space that allows you to feel supported by it. And clearly throughout, you know, throughout this, the last uh, 15, 20 years of uh, trying to persuade people to engage with the world, the, the space around them, the, the support beneath them, um, as opposed to engaging with their bodies. Um, the, that engagement with the world will give you a, a closer, um, will give you a, no, will give you a window into the actual physical solutions to local issues that are drawing your attention in the first place. By engaging through the body with the with the with the world around you, um, the body and mind become begin to integrate and become the same thing. They they were before, but what um, the body and mind might have been expressing before was the conflict that you're experiencing with the world. If that makes any kind of sense, it it, it seems like a theory. It seems like um, a concept. But as long as it remains conceptual, it, it 
kind of has no real meaning <laughs> because uh, just just to just explore this with me uh, what I just did the picking up of an arm you know uh, you're doing yoga and the instruction is to have your arms out in space and right? you can do that um, but what you're doing is holding your arms up in space and then there's this idea that you're supposed to look a particular way as you do your yoga so you're you know you're told told that it's meant to lead to being taller or stronger or something so you'll make yourself feel like you're doing the things that that um, you associate with being taller and stronger which is usually lifting and bracing and and those things together um, interfere with the thing that you're actually doing now try this instead of lifting your arms out in order to make a shape imagine imagine that your arms your shoulders are a pair of wings and instead of lifting them you take a breath so that you can sort of catch that breath with your wings and you might notice I, I close my eyes and I relax my neck because I'm in a physical relationship with the space around me, not a controlling relationship from my head. So imagine taking, catching the air underneath your wings as you breathe. When you've caught that air, see if you can float your wings on the air that you've caught. So you're still holding the breath and you drop the weight of those wings so that they sit on the cushion of air and you'll, you'll feel all sorts of new muscles working but the intention is to let go of the weight. Now, if you were to engage with that support, the imagined support that you're feeling, what you'll feel is your breathing gear, your, your core and your ribs working. So, and again, take a breath as if catching air underneath your rings rather than breathing, you know, rather than doing stuff to your breath. Use that, the support of that air Use the imagined support that you can find underneath those wings to float your arms out in space and you will discover new muscles <laughs> when you do that. In order to continue to support that, and if you're still holding the breath, you can bear down into your ground with that held breath so that the arms can relax. If you're finding it impossible to relax your shoulders, it's because you don't know how to. Uh, I, I stopped because it was hard work. <laughs> so let's do it again. Take a breath as if filling your wings. Use the air underneath the wings as if supporting yourself and your core and your ribs will work. Let the breath go inside of that effort. <sighs> Let go of the holding. <sighs> yeah. So I know, I know that was uh, much harder work in many ways, you would have found different muscles to engage with what you're doing. But you engaging with the world around you gives you a different response to you engaging with your body. The first one, holding your arms up, is easy for as long as the muscles don't, are not tired. Yeah? But that engagement is you doing something to your body which when you stop, will have caused the muscles that kind of pull on your spine to get tense and overworked. So the outcome will be your spine will still be uncomfortable. The effort engage, uh, that it was involved in engaging with space, and I had to, you had to use your imagination for that, through the breath and its release, would have caused different things to happen that are closer to your centre, closer to your spine. And there's even the potential within that to release your weight through the spine so that the core and ribs um, can be sort of rest through as they engage. And from, from that central, um, well, from that centering of your weight, the arms can kind of float in a structural way if you have a sort of sensitivity to space through your fingers. So it starts to feel like your limbs or your wings grow out through the fingertips or wingtips 
from the center of the spine. And it's a, it's a rhythm that follows the rhythm of breathing. And here, here's the, the next part of um, the simplification that I've come to, is that in the same way as doing stuff to your body separates you from it, doing stuff to your breath has a similar effect in that you are thinking about breathing and causing it to happen. So, and it, it's, a, it's a minefield because uh, the, the breath itself is actually the, the kind of source of the solution to everything. Because in the end, the ideal, if you want to talk, uh, talk about it physiologically, the I ideal physiological structural relationship is when the actions of breathing by themselves support you. As in, you can let go in space and feel supported. You can let go into your earth and feel supported in what you are doing. That's the, that, that's the conclusion I've come to as the ideal, the thing that we're looking for. So doing, uh, so we need to pay attention to how the breath goes, but doing pranayama, doing the breath, without an understanding of it being a relationship to your, the world around you um, can lead you down a blind alley. It will lead you down to all sorts of misinterpretations. So similarly, if you're working directly with a breath, you have to understand that it is a relationship. It's a relationship to support and it's a relationship to the world around you. And the ideal is that you feel supported by both as you breathe and as you release the breath. So here, here's um, a thing to do. Let, let's um, imagine that, you're, that you are interested in something over on the right-hand side, uh, interested enough to want to reach out to touch it. Um, but imagine it sounds good. Imagine it smells good. Imagine that it is going to, it's something that's beautiful to look at. So that all your senses get involved with the movement of turning to the right and reaching up. As you do it, breathe it. So the, the, it smelling good will help. Okay, And you'll find yourself working hard with the breath. That arriving breath needs to be sourced in you letting your weight go. So instead of lifting up to reach, drop your weight down, perhaps a little bit more on the opposite side, in order to be inflated up in space. I say the opposite side to allow the movement. But when you get there, allow the side that you are reaching up to, allow that side to fall away from you. So you're breathing the action, imagining that there's something you want to reach for, trying to relax your weight through your base, and then letting go into the action. Right, the other side. I did it twice because the first time I was thinking about it. The second time I let my face and my senses get involved. The inhale is the kind of definitive action on your part as you breathe, the mind goes with it. The exhale is you attempting to let go of your weight through your base, away from you. You can stay where you are, floating in space. And again, like, like the arm thing, you'll find different muscles working. As you, as you let go of your weight to breathe and use that breath to express in space, you'll find all sorts of efforts in your core, in your ribs, going on. But they, if you're able to do it by giving your weight down, you won't be having the familiar tensions and holding patterns in your groins, in your lower back, in your neck. And what they'll be replaced with is support that relates to the world rather than you, your muscles relating to hold you together. You know? And it's through the breath. And if you want to stay there, 
the release of the breath needs to support you. And the way that happens is when you let go of your weight away from what you're doing towards your center. And then the weight traveling through the spine allows you to have a kind of structural sense of support where you are. So marrying up the way you breathe with what you are doing rather than trying to change the way to make correct the way that you're breathing. If you, if you find a way of wholeheartedly breathing what you are doing, you might get a chance of experiencing releasing into what you're doing, which is kind of the goal. Um, in principle, if the breath has got you there and the release of the breath allows you to rest there, then simply letting go of your weight to breathe will keep you there. And what will develop is the breathing. You know, the, way, the way that the body breathes will be responding to what you're doing naturally. And all the things that we do to emphasize um, certain aspects of pranayama, which I can go into, but I won't today because it's too complicated. Um, all pranayamas are geared towards the nature of how you breathing what you are doing can lead to the experience that you're looking for. Yeah. This, this breath here where you're celebrating, you know, when you're in a re good relationship to this thing that you're reaching for, that, that's a kind of one-sided version of Sikari. There's a breath called Sikari where you make the sound seat smiling it into the heart as you breathe and then when you release the breath you make the sound car allowing the breath to fall away from you that's the uh, name that's the named version of the thing but you can do seat kari till the cows come home and get no benefit if once you tap into its nature which is about celebrating the heart celebrating the space you occupy from the heart once you recognize it directly, personally, from in your own experience, maybe I'm welcoming someone that I truly love, you know? You know? That feeling. Once that becomes a personal, direct relationship to what you're doing, instead of when someone turns up, you'll be doing it wholeheartedly. And when you release into that openness you'll be centered in your heart as you let go of tension and there will be all sorts of physical ramifications of that and if you know about what is supposed to happen you'll be very happy about it <laughs> if, if you're not sure and confused then you you might kibosh it with um you know worry or um inquire uh, uh, a query into whether it's right or wrong um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I hope that was of interest. It's the, the, the nature, the nature of practice and the breath and how it's your relationship to the world through these things that leads to the yoga that you're looking for, as opposed to your relationship directly to those things. As long as you are relating directly to those things, you are creating a separation between you and the things that are meant to sustain you in life. If you can take your personal engagement into the world around you through action, through senses, through the breath, and through its release with some idea of what you're looking for, then you can discover the the nature of it, which is far less complicated than the construct that the mind will build through um, dealing directly with the breath, dealing directly with the body. I'm not saying ignore those things. I'm saying work through them with the world around you and you'll get a much clearer idea of how this yoga business works. Okay. <laughs> hope that was of value and of use. I hope it's, um, just give it a try when you're doing a yoga posture, for example. Instead of making the shape, um, try and conjure up some natural expression of what you're doing. You know, um, 
you know, like triangle pose would be um, picking something up on the floor and then being interested in something above you. <laughs> um, through the breath and its release. Uh, you'll discover all sorts of new ways of experiencing yourself if you can simply shift where you do your practice from. Okay? Anyway, I hope that was useful, like I said, and uh, feel free to share it around anywhere you deem would be appropriate. Tap the, the like button for me so that I know that my work is appreciated. And uh, yes, you can work with me directly online this Saturday. Uh, but, uh, I do a, mo a regular Saturday morning workshop between 10.30 and 1, one o'clock. Um, always geared to the needs of participants. Uh, I did have a workshop up in Twickenham this Sunday, but um, it, various reasons it's needed to be cancelled and uh, it's going to be moved forwards to uh, early November and I'll put the dates up for that um, on the website soon. Uh, that's up in Twickenham, uh, a direct in-person group workshop. And uh, yeah, that's in November, but be before that, last weekend of October, I shall be, um, a, a friend of mine, Pete Loggy, is hosting a yoga workshop for me in Barcelona. So if you happen to be uh, in sunny Spain, uh, last, weekend, last weekend of October, I think it's the last weekend, um, yeah, come, come and see me. Uh, details are on the website somewhere, and yeah, I'll look forward to seeing you. Um, that's about it from me. Many thanks and much love and I shall see you soon. <laughs> Bye now.